Hey everybody, God bless you. Hey, I hope you enjoy Philippians chapter 1. Now we get into Philippians chapter 2. And like I said, I think Philippians 3 is, is the biggest one that really has uh, some, some heavy punches in it. But uh, let's see what I want to say about Philippians chapter 2. Uh, even sometimes called Christ's example of humility. And you know, that's one of the things that we as as a people, as individuals, is to show humility. You know, Christ didn't have to get on that cross, but he did. Christ didn't have to have all those people sit there and, and uh, smack him, spit on him, whip him, and everything else, but he did. For you, for me, you know. Uh, and that's that's the that's the, the humility uh, of the example that Christ gave. He had the power. He raised himself up with that power. But this time he showed humility. And let's see what Paul says about that in Philippians chapter two. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit. If any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. You see that, see that point? It's not being the same accord or men's mere rules, but being one accord of the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the others better than himself or themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Yeshua, who been in the form of God. <laughs> Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, come on now, of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant. Uh, you got that? Not a form of a rich man, not a form of a poor man, but of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, come on now, he humbled himself uh, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow, should, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Hmm? So that, that's the showing the divinity of Christ, but the humility of Christ. And for us to learn to be on the same mind, same one accord, we do that by the word of God by the read of the scriptures. Like I said, I told you, if you look at these scriptures and, and you don't see all the things that, that justified uh, the slavery, <laughs> justified the Jim Crow laws, justified hate, mob mentality, destruction and death, rape and humiliation, you, you're not going to find it because that goes against the, 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 the commandments of God, the commandment of Christ to love one another. You're not going to find it. And I, the sad thing I have, the sad thing I concerned with is how many ministers and ministries have endorsed those type of behavior and not realizing that they got greater condemnation. Because you know what I read? I want to say lower parts of earth. I mean, there's different levels of, 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 of hell. And these people know better. They, they read the same scripture you're not reading. You tell me how they come with different conclusions or endorsement or act blind to bad behavior and think it's okay. 
or parents who have access to these scriptures and teach their children to hate. I think that's something that really is like your eternal life is on the line and you're passing from generation to generation things that lead to eternal death. Hate equals eternal death. Because in John 3, right, 15, right? First John 3, 15, it says, he who hates his brother is a murderer. No murderer has eternal life of God is in him. So that seems like to be one of the principal things that we teach our children not to do is to hate. To teach ourselves not to hate. Ministers definitely have responsibility. Because look at the humility of Christ. Look at his in loving. And that every time you confess that you're sure Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Where the subtitle light, light in the world, wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as light in the world. Huh? Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored, come on y'all, in vain. So, let's see what we get here. I'm gonna move my crane up, uh, my cursor, I'm still messing with my cursor here. Okay, let's go ahead, verse uh, 17. Yea, if I run in vain, Neither, no, I think I read that already. 17, yea, and if I be offered up upon the sacrifice and service of faith, I rejo I joy uh, and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord, Yeshua, to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. You know, look at that. He's concerned about them. He wants to make sure they're squared away. Uh, but just, just check, just, just listen to the language and how they're talking to one another. Verse 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Yeshua Christ, but you know the proof of him that as a son with the Father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently as soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord. I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epictetus, my brother and companion and labor and fellow of soldier, but my messenger, but your messenger, and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that he, that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick, nigh unto death. <coughs> but God had mercy on him. And not only, not only, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should be sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully that when you see him again, you may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation. Because the works of Christ, because of the works of Christ, he was not unto death, not be God of his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Amen? So, so the last part is more administrative if you think about it, but the first part is talking about the humility of Christ. Like I said, uh, he turned down the cheek. Now, if you want to be those who listen and read these scriptures and see how, what a Christian is supposed to be, go to Romans 10, 9 and 10. When you confess with your mouth the Lord Yeshua and believe in your heart that God raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes in righteousness, but the mouth confession man salvation. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening. We'll see you 